Hello again. Okay. This is fairly, it's fairly easy <laughs> with Zoom. <laughs> All right. So, hmm. uh, Seth, yeah, I, I don't know if you have any knowledge of your grandfather. Do you, are you aware if he had, uh, you know, any other uses to to his magic, other than just performing, or if he used it in any other way? All I can say to that is that he had the persona of Mandrake the Magician, and that was the one that stayed with him his whole life. But I think sometimes, you know, he wanted to experiment and try other things. So he became um, Alexander the Great. Uh, there was a magician that already existed called Alexander the Man Who Knows. He was a mentalist. And because mm -hmm. my father did all kinds of uh, different magic, he did uh, not only stage performing, but he did escapism. He was really big on that. He did do mentalism and all kinds of things. So he also had um, a television, he had a couple of television shows. Um, one that was Alexander the Great. <laughs> And the other one was Mandrake the Magician. And, great, the magician. and he also made appearances in different TV underworld. series. This is my door to the underworld. For real? Why don't you step inside and look for yourself? He was interested in developing his own comic, so he did. He made a he made another uh, persona. Uh, what was the name of that? that one. Oh gosh, I can't remember, believe I can't remember. What was his name? It was very funny. It was very cute. He really just was that magician for his whole life, which I think is quite a feat all in itself, just to be stay so true. And he didn't have other jobs. Um, mm -hmm. Really, he sustained uh, this lifestyle of traveling, uh, going from one place to the next, and living off of his performance, his performance art. It's, it's quite amazing. It's quite amazing, I think. What a free... Yes an exciting kind of lifestyle to live yeah it was a long career yeah. i i know from what i've read yeah it was career. his it was his entire life and um you know when i really really think on that how extraordinary that is because the lifestyle is so unique it's a unique mm -hmm. life to live uh, just being a magician in the first place, but then just the fact of traveling all the time. And then, of course, he had four children with my grandmother, and those children were each born on the road while they were traveling. Each one is in from a different state. I mean, I just think that's the neatest thing, you know? And they all lived in Hawaii for a while, and they've lived in Alaska, and they've just, they're just everywhere. It is, it is extremely difficult you really have to be super to to manage that it's uh probably maybe a lot of people they don't have the idea of how how good a performer you know has to be to be able to to do that because you know the, there aren't that many that can for their whole lives and 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 especially you know, there, there were great magicians that they, at some point, they had to reinvent themselves, which really your grandfather didn't even need to do. So his, as far as I know, his image, like you said, it was it remained always Mandrick the magician. So it always were, that's something uh, of extraordinary in itself. And another thing that's yes. quite extraordinary is as he was going along traveling with his magic show, it wasn't just him, this one man, you know, getting up on stage and doing parlor tricks or, you know, little sleight of hand things. He put on a production 
he put on a giant show that had dancers, had many, you know, many people in it. Uh, musicians were in it. There's an agent in almost every town of any size, and he knew them ahead of time. One agent told me, he says, I never saw anything like that guy. He stayed in control of everything. It took a lot to build the show from the ground up, using trap doors, mirrors, acrobatics, and sleight of hand. He created a world with surprising storylines and unexpected twists. With large props, elaborate costumes, and a colorful cast of characters. Each two-hour show was different from the last, so audiences truly never knew what to expect. And yeah, I mean, if you think about it, what a huge feat it is that there's this comic book character at the same time that he is this live character, kind of like making personal appearances. He's, um, he has to kind of match up with the story a bit of what's going on with the comic. Three, two, one, zero. So he had Princess Narda, which was his assistant and his wife. And then he also had Lothar, who was this Prince of Africa, giant, strong man. And um, he had him on the show as well. And so they really put together something huge, a huge production. Now, if you think about that, the fact that he's traveling from one place to the next and he had multiple buses, I mean, yeah. And yeah. So I think Extraordinary. that's quite, quite a magic stunt right there. <laughs> it's, it's funny that you mentioned Princess Nard. I mean, I mean, because uh, actually my, my next question will relate a little bit about her contribution. I mean, Mandrick had several assistants, right? Am I correct? Through his career. But uh, Princess Narda seems to have uh, or seems to have had a big um, or a major contribution. Uh, would you say that it's it is true? And um, if so, was it mostly because she had past experience? She was, you know, gifted, you know, to be in uh, showbiz. Um, how how did how did that work out? That she managed to keep it, you know, or to help Mandrake develop his own, his own acts. Uh... Princess Narda is absolutely an extraordinary woman. And she indeed had her own show all by herself going on before she met my grandfather. So yes, she was very, a very capable performer all on her own. She made her own costumes. She trained doves and, and she brought her birds, her doves into her act to dance with her. So she's a true artist. She had a real sense of what looks beautiful on stage. A part of my act was in black light and my birds flew in the black light. I had a fantail pigeon that did everything she was supposed to do. And then she'd do some smart ass stuff on the side. Put my arms up like this. And she wanted to get back in the act, you know, so she would fly off of her perch and land on my head. Um, I think she really helped to shape it. I think it's safe to say that on that level, that huge performance production level, that she, she had a huge part in that. Um, in creating that and um yeah uh, does that answer that or is there more she's that's, a that's extraordinary great. person there can be a whole documentary done on her which i am thinking of doing by the way <laughs> and you know especially about a performer like mandrake you know, we, we are talking about high caliber performers from you know with the 
uh, a heavy name uh, on the history of magic. It's uh, for, you know, because of course to you, it's a grandfather to me as a uh, enthusiast or collector or, you know, call it whatever you will, but it's really cool. You know, we, we look like little children when when things appear like either photographs or posters or props. Mm -hmm. It's like our our eyes, you know, shine. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, doing this with you is very, very inspiring, very exciting. I'm so happy. I'm so happy you're a night yeah. owl like me. <laughs> I am because this, this time, as you can see, everybody's upstairs already sleeping and this is like you know when i get the, the time to focus and do my thing you know uh it's when i get to read and write and all those things so i'm, I'm, I'm still gonna stick around for a while maybe maybe read some magic or maybe watch some magic 